Amen. If you're free, you're free indeed. Well, you say, well, Brother Mike, I just go through so much stuff. Well, praise God. Give Him glory. That you are worthy, amen, to go through the trials of life. You know, sometimes we feel like we're all alone. But let me tell you what, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you're never alone. I love the picture, the painting in the sand where it has two footprints going side by side. Then all of a sudden there's just one set of footprints. Amen. I don't know how many of you have seen that picture. I imagine most of us have. But the glorious thing of it is what it says at the bottom of the picture. You know, when we get in a place where trials and tests are so strong, the reason there's only one set of footprints is because Christ is carrying us. Amen? That's something I want you to think on this morning. You, you may be going through a lot of trials. You may be going through times of decision. But I tell you what, I know one who has the answer. Amen. This book, if you found it yet, the third chapter, if not, it's up here on the board, I'm sure. I want us to read this together this morning. And I want you to really think about what these words are saying. We're going to read the first three verses to start with. It says, if. Now, I want you to think on the word if. That is a great big meaning right there. If. It's a question, actually. If. Ye being you, be risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. <laughs> Praise God. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God, can we pray together? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, I just invite you to anoint us this morning. Lord, to anoint my mouth and Lord, to anoint our ears. Father, to anoint our hearts that we would draw closer to you. Father, as we hear, Lord, the Bible says don't only be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. And Father, I ask right now that you would show us how to be doers of your word. Lord, I pray right now that your Holy Spirit would just touch every heart. Lord, that we would forget about the things outside these walls. And Lord, that we would set our affections on you and you alone. Lord, hide us behind the cross this morning. Father, we can present your gospel, Lord, with hope. <laughs> God, that we can live according to your perfect will. And Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. Hallelujah. Now, as I was reading this, <laughs> Amen, I began to think on me, not you. Okay, every one of us has to answer to the Word of God. And the best place to be is to put yourself in this place before God. And <laughs> here in Colossians, the word is to the church, if ye, if ye, if ye, if you <laughs> be risen, that means to be born again with Christ. Risen from the depths of sin. You've made that confession. Amen. 
You know, the Bible says if you can't confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you're not saved. Okay? But as we confess, amen, because we have been risen, it's like you woke out from a slumber. Your eyes were open to the truth of who God wants to be in your life. Amen? We have that comforter. We have His presence. And then he goes ahead, he says, if you be risen with Christ, seek. That means we got to go looking. Amen? I don't know if any of you have been deer hunting before. I know a lot of us have. Amen? When I was younger, I walked deer down. I didn't sit in a tree. I'd walk them down. I'd get them every time. I'd just get on a trail and I'd start walking them. Amen? Sometimes I'd find them grazed, and sometimes I'd find them laying there asleep. But I got what I went after. Amen? Now, that's just a, a story to tell you. If you don't get on the trail of God, amen, if you don't walk in the Word of God, you're not going to find anything that you have set your affections on, okay? It says, amen, it goes on, it says, set your affections on, on things above, not on the earth. That means our mind, amen, has to be set on the things of God. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Now the scripture teaches us that we have to die to the flesh. Okay? Can I tell you something? You're carnal. Don't mean to hurt nobody's feelings here this morning, but you are carnal. We war continually, as the Word of God says, we war against the principalities and the powers of Satan. Not me, bless God. Well, let me tell you something. You can act like you don't have wars and battles, but I tell you what, if, God, if, if Satan ain't attacking you, amen, God ain't got you. Amen? I want you to remember that. Praise God, when Satan attacks you, you ought to begin to praise God that you're worthy, amen, for the enemy to try to snare you back to the ways of the flesh. Amen? Every one of us wrestle with this. None of us are exempt. But praise God, I tell you what, we can overcome every, I said every, temptation and snare that the enemy throws at you. We must overcome every temptation and every snare that the enemy throws at us. This isn't I hope I can, it's I know I can because I don't fight this battle alone. Because God is with me and He has anointed me and He has called me to be His own. I was dead in sin, now I'm alive in Christ. Amen? A living vessel. Amen? I think about, I breathe and I hope and I trust in Christ. Come on, guys. <laughs> All right? When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with Him in glory. Praise God. If you're in Christ, you will appear with Him when He comes. You know, one day there's going to be a resurrection. Amen? The glory of God. God the Father is going to say to His Son, Son, go get my people. Amen? And when those words are spoken, there's only one group of people on planet Earth that's going to be going to be with the Father. And that's those who are born again. You say, Brother Mike, I have a hard time confessing, <laughs> amen, my sins to God. Let me tell you what, He already knows them. You ain't got no secrets. You have nothing hidden before the face of God. God has the all-seeing eye, and He sees everything we do. He knows the thoughts that are in our minds. Come on, guys. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> it says, when Christ, who is our life, He's my life. 
I've dedicated my life to Christ. Now, I don't preach 24-7, but I tell you what, I've got Christ with me 24-7. Amen? There's never a time, once I've made that confession of my faith, that God has ever left me. Now, sometimes we've left Him. Sometimes we make a decision in our life that we want to do things our way and not God's way. People say, well, how do you know what God's will is? Read the Word. It's all written in there. There's nothing, amen, that we have need of that isn't in the Word of God. And if anybody comes preaching any other gospel, they're a liar. Oh, don't you dare call me a liar, Brother Mike. I believe what I want to believe. That's the problem with a lot of the church today. <laughs> and even a lot of the preachers today standing in the pulpit. Uh, they preach a lie. They believe a lie. And the Bible says that the church will believe a lie and be damned. Well, that could never happen. Happens every day. Every week. You know, Christianity ought to be the fastest growing religion in this world. <laughs> Now, I hate the word religion, but I'm using it just for an example. Because we're not religious. We have a relationship with Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I don't like the word religion. <laughs> Praise God. I don't even like titles on churches anymore. I'm just getting sick and tired of it all. I just think we ought to confess we're believers. <laughs> Amen. The church of the believing Christ. Amen. We believe in Christ. Amen. He's our Savior. We believe in the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Amen. That He has come to live in the heart of those that believe. Praise God. It says, Ye shall appear with Him in glory. I'm going to tell you something. When Jesus comes back, everyone that has died in Christ... Their spirits are coming back with Christ. Now this isn't when he hits the ground. This is when he meets us in the clouds of glory. Amen. The Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those that are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet him in the air. You say, Brother Mike, why is the dead rising? Because their spirit is going to go back into their transformed body. I want you to understand that. Their spirit is going to have a body just like Christ's body was when he was resurrected. Huh? Remember when he told the disciples, don't touch me. Don't touch me because I have not yet ascended. Amen. In that state, he walked through walls. <laughs> Amen. But he ascended between that time and the time where he met him at the lake and fixed fish for him to eat. Huh? I, I, I just sometimes, well, you know, you guys know I got a mind that just wanders all the time. And uh, I could think about sitting down at the marriage feast of the Lamb. Amen. Oh, it's going to beat that crab place we ate at the other day. Uh, now, everybody probably knows my favorite fruit is pears. Okay? It's Lisa's less favorite fruit, but I like pears. I believe when they bring them pears and set them in front of me on that table, when I bite into them, the juice is going to run to my elbows. Amen? But I just imagine... Bible says there's trees that every tree bears 12 type of fruit by the season. Them trees are busy. Amen. But you know what? They run by the, the matter of fact, the Bible says the water comes out of the throne of God and starts that river of life. Amen. A few years ago, I died. Most of you know that. <laughs> They'd done give up on me. They'd shocked me. They'd done everything they could. Amen. I made a little trip. I'll be like, I'll just say it like uh, Peter said it. I, I don't know if I was there or it was a vision, but I'll tell you what, it was as real as anything I've ever seen. I stood in that river, and that river did not blow, go around me when I stood in it. It went through me. Amen. 
I want to tell you something. It's glorious what God has prepared for those that love Him. But you, you know what? You're not getting up there and just being some little hank floating around. Okay? I, I, get, I get upset sometimes. People say, oh, we're just all going to be a spiritual body. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you're going to be a glorified body. Yeah. Amen. Amen. A glorified body. When we get to heaven, <laughs> you talk about cutting a rusty. I can't wait to get before Jesus. I know the Bible says there's not going to be any tears up there, but I'd love to wash Jesus' feet with my tears. That would be my pleasure. <laughs> Amen. I want to bow before Him. I want to worship Him. But the only hope I have in getting there, amen, is our Sunday school lesson talked a little bit about this morning. we got to get real with God. Okay? See, they ought to put tags on some people's cars, part-time Christian. Okay? I've seen these tags undercover Christians on cars. It makes me angry. I, I hope everybody knows I'm a Christian. I don't even want to have to speak about it. I want people to be able to look at me and tell there's something different in my heart. Amen. We talked a little bit about that in Sunday school. The Bible says your eyes are the windows to your soul. Amen. If you've got God in there, you're going to shine with the glory of God. Amen. Boy, hallelujah. Mortify therefore your members. In other words, put to death. To mortify is to put to death your members. What's that talking about? The flesh. I got to put my flesh to death. Not in the death of dying, but this death makes me live. Isn't that glorious? I die to myself and live in Christ. But we've got to be ready to do this. Now, when it's talking about members, it's talking about the body parts. These little fingers can get you in trouble. Huh? These little feet can get you in trouble. This little tongue can get you in trouble. These little ears, they can get you in trouble. This nose, it can get you in trouble. You say, Brother Mike, how is that? Why, we're flesh. We're tempted. These fingers can reach out and take things that don't belong to them. Huh? These ears can listen to things we shouldn't be listening to. This mouth could consume things that are ungodly. Huh? These feet could take us places we ain't got no business going. We need to remember when the Lord is talking about to mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uh oh, uncleanliness, uh oh, <laughs> amen, and order infections, that means unnatural, <laughs> okay, conspicuous. And covetousness, which is idolatry. Ben's boy bought a new truck the other day. And I looked at that new truck, Ben, and man, I wish I had one like that thing. I do. I was looking at that thing. And you know what? And I'm going to be honest about this. I kind of had to ask the Lord. I didn't have to kind of. I did ask the Lord to forgive me. And I even asked your son to pray for me. I did. I said, pray for me. I'm kind of a little covetous. Amen. It was a pretty truck. It was red, I think, right? Amen. Boy, I'd look good sitting behind that wheel, you know. But you know what? That was his. I didn't begrudge him for having it. I was glad he got it. I celebrate with him. But boy, mm, I could put that to good use. <laughs> You know how we are? My brother Emmanuel bought a truck one time. Took it out and had all these stripes and stuff put on it. And his business name. He, Cheryl got in it one day with mud on her feet. And he went irate. 
Yeah, this is a true story. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit hit him about right there and said, you're in love with this truck more than you are your wife. Uh-oh. You can clean a little mud out, but you can't get another wife like that one, right? See, life's examples are in the Scripture. And if you just look at your life, you'll find the examples of you in the Scripture. I'm not here to judge you this morning. I'm here to teach you what God's Word says. Amen. I want you to understand that God is actually wanting you to mortify, to kill these members that are sinful. Put them to death. Until we put them to death, we can't be holy. And the Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see God. Now, by the way, I hope God blesses every one of you with a new truck. Okay? I do. <laughs> new car. Whatever you're desiring. I pray to God He bless you with that. And then I pray to God that God would help me not covet what you got. All right? <laughs> you could pray I might get one too. All right? <laughs> hey Amen. I don't need a new car. I've got everything I have need of. But you know, that's just how we are, our members. You know what the Lord told me to do with that truck? Get rid of it. You say, do what? Because the Lord said, you love that truck more than you love your wife. Now, he'd tell you the story if you'd listen. If he was still here with us. Maybe we'll sit around in heaven and talk about those things a little bit. Amen. I got a lot to talk about. <laughs> Amen. When I get there, after I see Jesus and my Father God, amen, I want to see my mama and my daddy. Amen, I want to confess to them where I was at and where God has brought me to. Amen, it's not because of our goodness. It's because of the goodness of God. All right? Until the Holy Spirit called you and drew you to God. Amen. I'm just going to kill a myth right now. People think just because the Holy Spirit draws them to Christ that they're filled with the Holy Spirit. No, you're not. Okay? The Holy Spirit comes when you ask Him, amen, to become real in your life. And the Bible has two different definitions. The first is the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is of the Holy Ghost. But it draws you to salvation. Amen. Then you are filled with the Holy Ghost when you ask the Holy Ghost to come into your heart and change your life. <laughs> we need to remember that, church. Amen. People get mad when we preach on issues that are scriptural. But let me tell you, we need to understand God's Word is yea and amen. And Mike's way of saying it is like it or lump it. Okay? God don't God is not asking your opinion on anything. <laughs> when I had a talk I heard a preacher say this one time. I had a talk with God and changed his mind. <laughs> no, you didn't. Liar. Okay? God's word is yea and amen. My Bible tells me that God's callings are without repentance. Amen. When God tells you to do something, He ain't changing His mind on it. See, I found out the hard way. I ran from God after He called me to preach. Amen. I was saved. But I was one of the most miserable Christians you ever met. Brother Tony's wife, Sister Karen, would meet me at the back door. Every Sunday morning, she'd look me dead in the eyes. And she'd say, Mike, when are you going to surrender? I'd just duck my head and run out the door. Amen. Lisa was standing right there by me. Every Sunday morning, I heard that. And I, I kind of wanted to put a sock in her mouth, you know. <laughs> because I didn't want to hear that no more. I knew God was calling me to preach. But see, I had an excuse. You know what my excuse was? I was a black sheep of the family. And I figured that if God was going to call somebody, it'd be Manuel. Yeah. Not me. <laughs> uh-uh. I was too ornery. I'd sinned too much. I knew I was forgiven. 
But you know one of the biggest problems I had, and I want to associate this with you guys, couldn't forgive myself. I could not forgive myself. And many of us get in that place. And Satan is always constantly, amen, bringing your past up. He'll bring it up with a stranger. Somebody come by, I've heard of you, man. You used to blah, 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 blah. Your friends. Oh, don't probably Christian with me. I know you. <laughs> yeah. You hear it all the time. And so you struggle with these issues in your life. You've got to put them to death. Verse 6 says, For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Oh boy. A lot of churches today are trying to just preach love. Love, 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 love. I preach love. God is love. But he's also our judge. And he's telling us if we, the church, now this wasn't wrote to the sinners. This was wrote to the believers. And he told them, he said, hey man, there's going to come a time you guys are going to face my wrath because you're disobedient. Hmm? Just as an example, anybody here ever correct a child? Why? Why'd you correct them? You wanted to change their hearts. Huh? Why, you've never had a whipping, have you? No. Oh, time or two? <laughs> yeah. Your dad probably had more than you did. But you know what? People say, well, Mike, you shouldn't have been so hard on the boys. They're going to run away from God. I've heard that. They're just going to run away from God. They don't want to go to church. Don't make them go to church. Well, I had a different idea. I'd been raised in church. I went six, seven days a week most of the time. Yep. Amen. I'd sit on my mom's lap, which she did not have. Okay? Mom didn't have a lap. She had legs that pointed downwards. It was like a slide. Okay? I'd sit on her lap, and she, when she would turn me loose, I went off like a ramp. <laughs> okay? She'd grab me and jerk me back up in her lap like I did it on purpose. Okay, well, if she'd brought me some britches that wasn't made out of nylon, I probably wouldn't have slipped down her lap so fast, you know. But here I was sitting on her her dress, to, you know, her her lap, what was supposed to be a lap. Now, mom, everybody knows mom was four foot ten. Okay, her feet never reached the floor, but boy, I'd slide down that thing. She'd pull me up, smack me on the leg. Huh? Church, you get to going real good. She'd start praising the Lord, raise her hand up, or wipe her eyes with a, that old hanky with things going around it, you know. Amen. Whoosh, there I went. Yeah. I was gone. She jerked me back up. After I did that six or seven times, she'd grab my little hand. I remember this like it was yesterday. She'd grab me by the hand and back to the ladies' bathroom we went. Uh, she closed the door. She would jerk my belt off and wear me out because I was sliding down her lap. Yeah. That should have made me hate her, but it didn't. I always loved her. All right? I was in church every day. I was told as long as I lived under their roof, I would go to church. I raised my boys the same way. Ask your story about Uncle Manuel taking him outside, your daddy. My, my brother Manuel, I was preaching. Amen. Caleb kept acting up in church. Lisa took him out twice, I think. <laughs> Brought him back in. He started acting up again. I'm trying to preach. 
Manuel reaches over the pew, grabs Caleb, takes him out underneath the tree, pulls the switch off of it, and Caleb, when he come back, he said, Dad, <laughs> Uncle Manuel whipped me till I cried, and then he whipped me till I shut up. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I believe in correcting our children. You say, oh, Brother Mike, you're going to run away from God. Where are my boys at today? Huh? Where are they at right now? One of them's preaching the gospel. The other's playing the drums and singing in the church. Their wives are both leading worship. Wyatt's starting to lead worship with them. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. You know what? That makes me happy. My heart is happy. Amen. When Josh and, and Jackie come back and rededicated to the Lord, Amen. I tell you what, that broke my heart in a good way. <laughs> Amen. I cried real tears. Amen. Because I was rejoicing. Amen. That all the effort that we'd put into them was now being prosperous. See, I, I believe the Scripture, you need to have understanding of what the Scripture is saying. These are not just words on a paper. Amen. Every one of us has experienced these words as we read them. <laughs> Amen. But he's talking about children of God, adults that have went back and started playing in the world. Huh? What's this old song say? You got time to look back or something? My feet have trod through the valley. Huh? I've come too far to look back. Yeah, my feet have trod through the valley. Amen. We just got to keep on plugging. I want to remind you of something. If you stay on the mountaintop all the time, there's going to be two things that are going to kill you spiritually. One is you ain't going to get no water on top of the mountain. Second, there ain't no grass growing up there. You ain't going to eat. You know when we eat and drink is when we're in the valley. Because all the water from that mountain comes down to the bottom of that mountain. There's streams down there full of cold, cool water. Praise God. Sometimes we need to tread through the valley. Amen. We need to remember that God has, even though He lets us go through the valley, He'll take us on the side of the mountain where we can graze. Amen. What I'm trying to say is don't get too big for your britches and run to the top of the mountain and thank your king. Okay? Amen. Verse 7 says, In the which ye also walked sometimes when ye lived in them. Every one of us has been sinners. I'm going to say something this morning. may just upset the daylights out of some people. I hate it when people say, Well, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. I despise that. Because the scripture says, I was a sinner, and now I am a saint. God gave you a new identity. It's, it's just like if I'd have been adopted and that family gave me their last name. Huh? I'd hate to lose my last name. I kind of like it. Amen. But you know what? There's going to be a day that God's going to give me a new name. Amen. He's going to give us a new name. Amen. He's going to put a mark upon our forehead. Amen. I am glad to know that my king loves me so much. He said, I have adopted you. Huh? I've adopted you. You tell me you love me, I'll adopt you. You tell me I'm your father. I've adopted you. Amen. Now I go out and tell the world. It's not a secret. It's a confession. Every time we get the opportunity. I'm always asking Lisa when we come out of Walmart, I'll say, did I embarrass you? She'll always go, no. <laughs> Amen. I'll find somebody to talk about Jesus with. Amen. I'm going to find somebody to share the word with. I, I, don't, I don't know them. A lot of them I ain't never met in my life. Amen. That's what I want. I want one I don't know. 
I want to find out where their heart's at with God. Amen? We are strangers in this country. We're just passing through. Amen? My hope is not in the things of the world. My hope is in Christ. And that's where I want your hope at today. Amen? We walked in sin one time, but then he goes on in verse 8, and this is where I'm going to close at. But now ye also put off all those things. You put them off. Means you quit them. Y'all ever quit something? Huh? I, I can honestly say, I don't believe I have ever taken the Lord's name in vain. But boy, I could cuss like a sailor. Yep. I could. I'd get around that. I didn't want to use God's name in vain because I'd been taught for years you didn't do that. So I just used other words in place of it because my communication was not good. You know what happened when I got saved? God took all those words out of my vocabulary. Now, I ain't bragging about Mike. I'm bragging about God. Amen. I ain't said a curse word in, what, 49 years. 49 years. I used this example yesterday. My brother Manuel, me and him, was on the roof of Mom's house putting the back porch on the young porch. New when we built where Eugene had it saved. Amen. We was driving 16 penny nails and we was doing it one lick. You know, you've probably been there. You gotta, gotta show off to your brothers, you know. We was up on that roof, and Manuel forgot to move his thumb. Okay, he drove two nails in the roof. Okay, a sixteen penny nail in his thumb. Now went boop. You know what he done? He grabbed his thumb, and it was just bleeding like a zip. He said, "Praise God, that hurts." Most people wouldn't have said, "Praise God." He did. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Okay? Well, I got so excited trying to get a hanky out to wrap around his thumb, I kicked a 32-ounce hammer off the roof. Okay? It hit Jeff right on top of the head and knocked him out cold. Okay? Now, that's my brother-in-law. Okay? Knocked him out cold. We went to go down the ladder and Jeff laying there. What was funny at the time, he had a big old knot on top of his head. Knocked him out cold. Amen. That was quite a day. Quite entertaining. All right? But you know, we went through all that. There was never a bad word spoken. There was never a hard feeling. It's all become family jokes. Because you know what? We all love the Lord. There's a difference when you're working with guys that don't love the Lord. Amen. Amen. My father-in-law dropped a rafter on top of my head when I was building my garage. Amen. It was just me and him out there hanging rafters. He got that dude 10 foot up, and I helped him put his side up. Amen. It was just barely on. I thought he was going to pull it back up. Amen. I went come down the ladder to go to my side to nail it up, and I just got off the ladder, and he dropped the rafter, and it hit me right on top of the head. I didn't know nothing for a few minutes. You know, well, I don't know much anyway, but, you know, the matter of the fact is, is there was no cussing. There was no anger. Why? Because we was with family. We was with born-again believers. Amen. I got a father-in-law that loves the Lord. He raised his daughter right. Now, she wasn't always this little Christian, okay? Uh-huh. Amen. She had just as much of the devil in her as I had in me. Okay, though she didn't do things I did, we were lost. We were lost, but we got saved. And I'm here to tell you, salvation's real. It'll change your life. It'll make you a brand new person. Praise God. I know we have to work in this world. I understand that. I worked in this world a long time. But I don't have to be a part of it. And I just want to challenge each one of you this morning. Do you have the freedom in Christ? Are you free from the burden of sin? 
You know what makes you free from sin? The blood of Jesus Christ. When you confess him, he wraps you in his robe of white. He puts a little dot of blood on your forehead, I think. Amen. He anoints you. And he calls you his own. I mentioned this morning about there's three books in heaven. You don't hear this preached on much. Because a lot of people get a little upset about this. But the Bible says there's a Lamb's book of life. And that's when you make your confession of your faith. Amen. I look around here and I'm pretty sure most of you have done that. If you haven't, you need to. Okay? Be baptized. And then God's got two more books. One's a book of works. Did you know that's in the Scripture? There's a book of works. God's going to begin to record your works for the faith. You're not saved by works. You're saved by faith. And after you're saved, then you begin to do things for God. There's some people, they say, well, I got saved back in 1980, bless God. They ain't ever done nothing but sit on the church pew. Huh? I'd hate to see their book. All right, and then there's a book of deeds, the Bible says. A book of deeds. It's what have you done for others. Huh? That little one lady that you knew that had no groceries in her house, and you just brought a sack of groceries and set them on her porch. That little child that needed a hug. Huh? Sister Linda, your grandson, he used to come in here every Sunday. This was when he was littler. And he'd say, Brother Mike, I need a man hug. Uh, I'd hold him and I'd squeeze him tight, Jeremy. He's your boy, okay? And, but you know what? He loved me. And I'd squeeze him tight. And I always tell him how much God loved him. You say, well, that ain't nothing. I tell you, it ain't the big things. It's the little things. Huh? It's the little things that you do for God. Bob and Karen, if you would come. The reason I told you about those three books is because I want you to labor. Amen. Labor to do what God wants you to do. Amen. Oh, bless God. I could preach about another hour, but I'm not going to. If you all would stand with us this morning. If anyone wants to come and pray, feel free. Amen. You know, I'm going to say something else real quick, okay? This, the prayer that we had here this morning, I'd love to see that every Sunday. I would. Where people feel the freedom. People say, well, people are going to think I'm back to I go to the altar. Hooey. That's a lie the devil's telling you. I just look at you, you're wanting to get closer to God. Amen. You're praying for a lost loved one. Praise God. If we can't bow our knees before God, how are we going to stand before Him? Huh? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just ask right now, Lord, that you would just touch our hearts. Lord, if we feel like coming up and bowing our knees before your, Lord, just turning around and slipping at our knees at our pew. Lord, give us that freedom. Lord, that we can bow before you. Lord, inspect my life. Let me be what you want me to be. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Lord, it's not my brother nor my sister so much. It's me. Lord, let each of us say that this morning. Father, I'm going to stand before you. Will you find me worthy? Oh, yes, Lord, you will. Because the blood has been applied. Lord, let us not believe those lies that the enemy tries to bring to us and say, you're unworthy. You're unworthy. Lord, I know in the flesh I'm not worthy. But I know by your blood <laughs> you have made me worthy. <laughs> Lord, I thank you for that this morning. Lord, I want each one of us, Lord, to just look up and say, Lord, by the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have made me <laughs> worthy. Now let me be about your business, Lord. Father, inspect our hearts this morning. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. There is a river of 